Hello friends and welcome to Escaping the Mouse with your host, me, Breck Roll. All right, it's uh, Monday, it's one of my days off of work and it's kind of a rainy day out today, so today is just kind of a catch-up day. There's a whole bunch of things that have been going on for the past couple weeks or so and now that I know that I specifically have a trip to California planned next week for my father's funeral, I got a little, I got a few things I need to get straightened out and taken care of before I can, uh, you know, start going full bore again here. So one of those things is that I need to do some laundry because this is going to probably be my last chance to do it before I actually go to California. And, you know, I'm running out of clean clothes. So, you know what, that just happens from time to time. Now, I maybe could have done some laundry yesterday, but uh, Saturdays and Sundays are really kind of a bad day around here because apparently everyone in the world wants to do their laundry on Saturdays and Sundays. So I kind of waited for today, Monday, because now I know you know, the place, everyone's at work, and so I won't have that much competition for that. And so that just means, you know, since there's multiple machines in there, you know, I can take up three or four machines and get it all done in a very short period of time. And that just kind of makes sense from a time standpoint that I'm not tied around, tied up here all day and, uh, you know, trying to figure out how to entertain myself. A uh, couple other things I have to do is uh, make some reservations for, for my trip next week. And so I got to Got to get on the internet and uh, find find uh, airline flights to and from California. I think I'm going to fly out on Sunday and return the following Wednesday because I got to be back to work on Thursday. Now, like I said, I'm not sure how all this work stuff is going right now because I told you about this shutdown that they're doing uh, sometime next week. I expect that I probably won't be working the week that much when I come back after my California trip, but. I'm still kind of going on the assumption that I may be, even if I'm just going in and reading SOPs. So, I, you know, I'm still kind of planning to be back uh, and work around whatever the work schedule turns out to be that week. And I won't know that until later on this week. So we're, we're just kind of playing it by ear. But um, got to got to get that done, got the reservations to get made. Um, I'm also having to help my uncle a little bit uh, make reservations. He's... Uh, not really that comfortable with with computers and internet stuff so he asked if I could just make hotel reservations for him he uh, he got his airline reservations done he used to work with a with an airline and so even though now that he's retired I believe he still gets like discount uh, rates on air travel so if not if not like free air travel I don't know I don't know exactly what the issue is because he used to work with Northwest and I don't think Northwest even exists anymore but I'm sure they just didn't go bankrupt and you know burn all the planes to the ground I'm sure somebody bought the assets and I'm guessing that's what happened is whoever bought the assets for Northwest now you know are the people he go to for for free flight so I'm sure that's still working out for him, but in terms of hotels, you know, he he doesn't know anything about uh, cell phones. He doesn't have any apps. He doesn't know about Expedia or Travelocity or Travago or any of those sites. So he just asked if it'd be possible for me to do it. And actually, it turns out when I made his reservations earlier in the week, um, I actually screwed up. Um, he wanted to be here for two days. He wanted to fly in on Sunday be here for the funeral and and, uh, and memorial service on Monday and then fly back home on Tuesday. Well, somehow when I made his, his reservations on Expedia, I only scheduled him for one night, for Sunday night. And so technically that left him homeless on Monday night, you know, before Tuesday morning. So... You know, he called back and said, hey, you know, I got a confirmation email from from the hotel, but it's only for one night. Can you see if you can figure out whatever that is and get it straightened out? And so I, so I contacted the hotel directly, explained what happened and uh, asked them if they could help help me figure out how to work this out. And they said, well, since you made it with uh, Expedia, you have to deal with the problem with Expedia and Expedia wouldn't let me change the reservation I made all I could do was cancel it and if I canceled it I ended up sacrificing all the money that I put into it so I actually ended up making a second reservation for my uncle for both Sunday night and Monday night and then I started thinking about it well now he's gonna have to pay for two rooms for only one person so I contacted um, 
I contacted the hotel again this morning, kind of explained what was going on. You know, it took me like five minutes to, of talking to him to, you know, help him understand all, you know, what had happened and what I was trying to do. But basically, since I had uh, one, one night, Sunday night for Expedia, and then a second reservation I made with them for Sunday and Monday night, I asked if it'd be possible to cancel the Sunday night reservation uh, that I made directly with them and just keep the Monday night reservation and then tie it to the to the Sunday night reservation I made through Expedia so he didn't have to change hotel rooms in the middle. It was a little bit complicated, but I think I got him to the point where he understands what's going on. He was able to find both reservations and he said he connected everything together for me. So, you know, hopefully that all works out and we'll, you know, cross that bridge when we come to it. But hope, but at this point, even, uh, even if, um, you know, he can't, he has to move rooms in the middle, you know, at least he's not paying for a third night that he doesn't, that's just wasted money. So I'm hoping we got this all straightened out. Uh, it was also good I call, called back because they had the reservation on the wrong, under the wrong name. They had it under Powell, not Rowell. And uh, they also had his email address mixed up. So, the, you know, one of the questions my uncle was wondering is, hey, you know, did you fix this for me? Because I didn't get any kind of confirmation. Well, it turns out they screwed up his email address when they took it from me the first time, too. So they sent the confirmation to the wrong place, and that explains why my uncle didn't get it. So uh, we got all that wrapped up today, and hopefully that will uh, work go smoothly from now on. Um, one other thing, um, I still got to sit down and spend some time writing a eulogy for my father. Uh, but I really got some, I think, good content uh, when I did the video that you guys saw yesterday. And I think I'll be able to kind of take that and boil it down to to a, uh, a couple of comments that will, you know, give me a couple minutes to talk about him, talking about his memory. R rather, I think, than going into a lot of detail like I did yesterday, I think I'm just going to you know, gloss over it and kind of talk about the whole thing as once, as one, talk about, you know, how my father was involved in, uh, in so many of the projects, you know, whether it was building the planter or helping me build the patio cover or, you know, supervising when they laid the con concrete and built the pond and all that stuff, or, or helping with the, uh, you know, you know all, all the other stuff that went into the yard, the painting of the house when we did that. You know, I'm just going to kind of you know, give like one or two lines on each one of those things. Try and bring a little humor into it because my father would have loved that. I'm definitely going to talk about that piece of the fence where you had to sit there and poke out all the holes with the nails because that's just a hilarious image. And I think that'll really lighten the mood at a, at a memorial service. And I, I noticed that one of the words I kept going back to over and over yesterday uh, when I was uh, doing the walk through Cameron Park and just kind of reminiscing was supervisor. And so I think that I'm going to kind of make that the theme. Um, I kind of started figuring that out last night when I was editing the video, and that was why I call it called it uh, Eulogy for the Supervisor, because I think that's going to kind of be a re reoccurring theme that, you know, he, he was the supervisor when he came in. I mean, not supervisor in the, in the point of, from the perspective of not doing any of the work, but just, you know, he loved to be there just to watch that stuff go on. And if he, and he could, and he could participate and he did that all he could. And like I said, I think that's just kind of where I'm going to go on that. So, um, I'll probably spend a little time today you know, in front of the keyboard, coming up with some words that sound good to me. Usually I like to, you know, get like a stream of consciousness thought the first time and then go in and revise it and make it flow better and, you know, deal with all my typos and grammatical errors and stuff like that. Uh, but I think I've got a good start on that and I'm going to work on that for the rest of the day. So anyway, I think that is all that I have for today. Thank you as always for watching, and I will see you next time on Escaping the Mouse. Good night.